The Sermon for All Saints Day is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Uh, the sermon is entitled, Blessed. Grace, mercy, peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we remember all the saints that have gone before us. From all the faithful in the Holy Scriptures, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, even to Martin Luther, and all the great reformers that have preceded us, to all the faithful, as we just read, those very names that are close to us. It is a time for many of us to remember them, and yes, indeed, there is grief, there is loss, as we remember the faithful departed. But yet at the same time, there is also hope. As they rest, baptized into Christ, sealed in his name, washed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, there they are in the name of the Lord, serving him day and night amongst the throne. A time of great comfort and joy, rejoice in the midst of our grief. Yet yeah, we see St. John's vision from all the tribes, just look at that, and the people and the languages, the palm branches waving, crying out, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. These are the words of true blessedness. The salvation is Jesus Christ, the throne the Lamb who finished all things. And because of His finishing work, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Everything is satisfied. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in His midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to the springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the life of the Holy Ones, set apart by the Holy Word of God in Christ Jesus, set apart by the holy gifts that He has given to us by His grace in the sacraments where God has declared you in this faith, holy, righteous, and forgiven. For those that have gone before us, they're just there first. But we'll be there too. They just got there first. And though we live in this day as we anticipate the world that the, the day that is to come in our Lord's return, remember, through all things, you are blessed. Yes, right now, you are the blessed ones. And Jesus describes this state of blessedness for you in Matthew chapter 5. As we read it, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for they shall be satisfied. Yes, the life of blessedness is one of poor in spirit one of mourning, one that lives in meekness, that hungers and thirsts. And yet you may ask, how are these words a blessing when many would see them as a curse? Because no one in this world, when it comes to blessing or in the discussion of blessing, ever connects with lowliness and mourning and hungering and thirsting and emptiness. Yet today, Jesus gives us his words that these are the words, this is the state of your blessing. The question is, how are they a blessing? Because it all begins with the root, the foundation, the core, and even the circumference of who we are on this All Saints Day. We remember 
and we rejoice and take solace in the true blessedness that our Lord has given to us. And as we read the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, there we see what? We see Jesus. That's what we see in the scriptures. We see the cross in Matthew 5. We see the crown of thorns. We see his mercy. We see his will and grace. We see the resurrection, the victory, and the triumph, the empty tomb weaved throughout his precious word. Because if we do not see Jesus intertwined in these words of blessedness, there is no blessing at all. And there in our human way, we try to fashion that blessedness by simply saying, I have to do this. I have to alter my behavior, my attitude, my way of thinking. I need to do these things in order to be blessed and to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, is that right? Is this what we do to achieve blessedness. It always reminds me of Matthew 19 and the rich young ruler asking, what must I do to enter the kingdom of God? After conversing with the Lord, the Lord very well knew that though this thought of of his blessedness was in his own works and ways, that he thought he could actually achieve and earn the entrance in the kingdom of God all by his works, The Lord knew his idolatrous heart. The Lord knew of his his worship of these things of this world. And there he realized, this rich young ruler, what he was entrenched in. And there he walked away sorrowful, lacking repentance. And so it is with the Beatitudes. As we read it, It's not a, what must I do to enter the state of blessedness, but rather what Jesus has done for me to give me this state of blessedness. Because the fact is, friends, no matter how we parse, no matter how we picture ourselves, there we are as Jesus describes each and every one of us. That we are indeed poor in spirit. We are. I don't think we want to admit that all too much, but there we are, poor in spirit. We mourn. We are lowly. We, we hunger and thirst for righteousness because from within, no one is righteous, not even one. It's not about simply behavioral changes or attitude adjustments or just being better or, being, uh, or just doing good, Right? But it's all about the human sin condition. The spiritual DNA that is before us. Where there in the garden the anvil was dropped and there entering the world was our sin. Sin brings bankruptcy. And in this debt, the old Adam says, no, I can, I can fill this account by myself. I can be better. I can earn my blessedness. I can do this myself. I need no one else but myself. The devil says, why would you want to be Christian? Is this a state of blessedness, being poor in spirit, being in mourning and lowly and, and hungering and thirsting? No, go to the world and find it because there you will find your prosperity because that's what you need. Yet this is not so. We know who we are in our sin. And there our Lord delivers you the full payment of your sins and for your sins by the way of the cross. Only Christ. Not you, not me, not our own greatness, not our own power, but rather our Lord who came to this world to be your blessing, to deliver you your eternal state of blessedness to take upon your poverty, your own weakness, your own emptiness, as he emptied himself out 
who knew no sin but became sin for us. And there in the flesh, in his blessed incarnation, he came to this world to give you his blessing, his sacrifice. Because without the sacrificial gift of Christ at the cross in his death, there is no blessing in this world. We would be left with an impoverished spirit. We would be left with eternal mourning, lowliness, hungering, and thirsting, going to that empty cup time and time again. And this is a picture of despair. There would be no saints without Christ. But our Lord, he turned everything upside down because there is his sacrifice taking upon the weight of your sin and shedding his blood at Calvary. Jesus lavishes you with the riches of his grace. He takes the cup of wrath so that your cup, though empty you may think it is, it overflows by His very blood. And indeed, because of His grace, you are blessed. Because the payment has been fulfilled, the ransom price for your sin met. And there you are right now and forever, the saints of God. This is who you are, for the resurrection proves and shows you that there is no more eternal mourning in your guilt, your sin, or even death in itself. But it is our Lord who was raised, where there you have your comfort right now. The remedy of Christ, that indeed your sins are indeed forgiven and you are declared righteous. You are the holy ones, the ones who are set apart where your tears are dried, where your hunger and thirst is satisfied because this day and every day you are the saints. You know, St. John in the book of Revelation shows us a great and grandiose picture of grace. He looks at all the multitude from every tribe and tongue, and there he sees you. He is talking about you. Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? They are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. He is talking about you. Because in the blood of the Lamb you are. Those that have gone before us, they too are in the blood of the Lamb, washed by His very grace. And so are you. Blessed are you. Set apart as the holy ones. And there you go serving in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. The saints before us showed us great examples of how to live in this faith. And so it is with us. We serve in the name of Christ, that by His mercy we live mercifully. By His pure gift we live with a pure heart, that even when we face suffering and persecution for the faith, we take heart because God is with us as we are wrapped in his robe of righteousness. And even when evil assails us, we continue on standing boldly for this very word because you are already there. You're already there. You are the saints washed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. This is what it means to be blessed. No longer are you empty, but you are full. No longer does the grave overcome you, but you have eternal life. No longer does the devil accuse you, 
trying to bring you to despair because Jesus has comforted you by his very promise. See what kind of love the Father has given to you, to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. And you are. How do you know? In the blood of the Lamb, in the water and the Word, in the body and blood of Jesus at this altar, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.